Hi there. Welcome back to this channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about the derivation of the progressive wave equation. Um, if you have not already, do work to subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification to get notified whenever I drop a new video. And let's take the channel to 1 million subscribers. Um, this channel is all about um, building you up in science, you know, so that you will have a good foundation, a good grasp of what um, you've probably been taught already in class that you don't understand, you want to understand better. Is that okay? In fact, for example, this wave equation that we're going to be talking about, we are going to, um, I'm going to really explain from why, what is what, do you understand? Whatever we're talking about, we're just going to be explaining them. Yeah, and you heard what I said the other time, I also said, what did you just say? I am saying that we should take this channel to 1 million subscribers, and that is me dreaming big, is that okay? All right, but leave my dream anyway, just subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the video now. We have a progressive wave, and what is a progressive wave? We represented it by a wave um, diagram that looks like this. So this is a progressive wave example. And uh, we said this wave is the crest, and this one is the trough, all right? And the length from here to here, the distance from here to here corresponds to the amplitude of a wave, is that okay? Now, um, I'm going to be link linking that video in the description below where I talked about the introduction to waves. Now, you see, this amplitude is, we said is the highest maximum um, displacement, highest distance, highest vertical distance, or, yeah, highest vertical distance of the wave. So highest vertical distance here, or lowest, vertical distance here. That is how to um, identify the amplitude. But what is the particular horizon, uh, vertical displacement at a particular time? You know we described this wave on a 2D plane, on an X and a Y plane. So what is the particular vertical displacement of, a, of, a, of the wave at a particular point in time? Now, I'm going to explain this thing in two ways. First, I mean that if my wave, if we talk about, from, if we talk, talk about this point of the wave, this specific point of the wave, how far above the ground is this point? Above the X plane is this point? How much has, has it gone up? How much up has it gone? Do you understand? So that is what we mean. So we'll call it our particular Y. Do you understand? From, from here to here. It's going to be our what? Our y. So that is what we mean by um, vertical displacement. Vertical displacement. Now, the second way is, you know, we said that a wave motion is synonymous, is, can be likened to a circular, um, the motion of a body in a circular path. So, for example, look at this body moving this, uh, around the circular path. Now, if it is the center of the, this, of the, of the circle, by the time the body is at any point, let's say around, if the body is around here, you know the body is, let's say, um, 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 whirling, I tied this guy, attached this guy to a rope, and I was whirling it around. So at a particular point in time, this marker will be here. So at that point when it is here, you know that we describe this circle also by, as you know, the circle is a 2D geometry. Now, so this guy, this guy has a, an X plane and a Y plane. Now, at this particular point where it is, how much far away from the X plane has it gone? So we are analyzing this guy as our Y. This guy will be our radius. Now, remember that the radius will be what? Will be the same. So it will be the amplitude of the circle. Amplitude of the wave, which is the radius of the circle. I hope you understand that. Then this will be our, um, sorry, this would be our, our x-axis, which is also, um, which is the, the radius of the circle, which is the radius of the circle. If I pick another point, for example, let me pick um, another point here. No, this should be here. If I pick another point here, for example, 
and I want to know how far up has it gone. All I need to do is pick this guy up here. So this will be my amplitude. Now, there are two ways to know. No, no, I, can, I will bring it down here. So I'll ask myself, how far up has it gone? This is the upward displacement. Now, I could also take, take the x, the um, how far to the horizontal has it gone? Do you understand? The horizontal displacement. Do you understand? All right. So in that case, using this rule, I'm still going to come back to that. Using this rule, if my angle here were to be theta, using this point here, using this outer angle here, what we are going to have is this. So this will be my angle theta. Let me throw it out boldly. Yes, ma'am. So I said that the maximum y will be the ma the, the um, horizontal uh, vertical displacement y will be vertical displacement vertical displacement and x will be what the horizontal displacement. So if we want to treat y. We will, we have the triangle like this, a triangle like this. This is angle theta, this is our y, and this is our amplitude a, and this is our x, of course. So to find y, y will be described as what? Opposite, right? Because it's facing the angle, so y will be the opposite. And... Um, what is known there? The x is not known because the x is actually a particular value here that is also not known. So what we what we know about this circle here is the radius, which is the amplitude. So what we are sure of is the amplitude. So we are going to be relating the amplitude with the y, so that the trig function that, that works for that using Sokatoa is sine because we have opposite and hypotenuse. So it means that sine theta will be equal to the opposite, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is a. Do you understand that? So from this, we can therefore say that when we cross multiply, y will be equal to a sine theta. All right. I hope that is clear. If it was x that I wanted to find, you, this would be adjacent, so it will become cos. It is cos and um, cos and it is cos that relates adjacent and the hypotenuse. So we have cos theta will be equal to what? Cos theta will be equal to adjacent, which is x over hypotenuse. When we cross multiply, we have a cos theta. So this is what we use to find the horizontal displacement. Why we use this to find um, the vertical displacement? So we are particular about the vertical displacement for now. Now looking at this guy, looking at this guy, another way to, see, to view it is if I were to take this line. If I were to make a straight line like this, a tangent to this point, now this point will be our angle theta. All right. Now, what we are basically doing is we are resolving this to the vertical. So as we are resolving this line to the vertical, I told you it means we'll be opening this angle. And when you are opening an angle, I said what? That it is what? Sine theta. So what does that mean? It will be A sine theta. Do you understand that? So, and, and B, I have explained mathematics here. So, we get it now. All right, let's now go on to proving the equation. So, we know where this is coming from now. So, what do we have? We have S, Y, uh, vertical displacement. We go to y, which is a sine theta. So now we have to begin to recall our knowledge of the circular motion. So because a wave motion is also like a circular motion, is that okay? So now, do we remember, or we should remember, that we said that angular velocity is actually equal to the angle covered per time or angular speed? Recall this, right? So it means that theta therefore will be equal to what? Omega t. So what does that tell us? So we have that y will be equal to what? A sine omega t. Omega t. All right. So if this is equation one, this is equation two. 
Now, if we were now considering, if we were not considering just the horizontal distance, we were considering maybe we were considering just two points, the horizontal distance between two points on the wave. So if I say consider from here to here, what is the horizontal dis uh, vertical distance other between them? What is the vertical distance between these two points? So we said that the distance between them will be what? Will be known as what? Because they are not in the same, they are not in phase. Is that okay? So the distance between them will be the, we'll, we'll, we'll call it a phase difference. Is that okay? So we will introduce a phase difference here. So that this will now become, what will now be called to A sine omega t minus phase difference. Now phase difference because those guys are not in phase. Those two points that we are considering are not in phase. Do we understand? And we remember from our last video that phase difference is because of what? 2 pi x over lambda. Now, if you don't understand where I got this, you can go back to that video. I'll link it in the description. Recall this, that phi is equal to 2 pi x over lambda. If you don't understand how I got this again, I repeat, I, I will... I'm um, link that in the video description. Now, we will also recall, recall also that omega is equal to what? 2 pi f. I've explained that in the circular motion. So I'm going to link all those videos in the description. So um, we have this, so that y can therefore become a sine. Now, you know this is altogether omega t, sine of omega t. So here, it will be altogether this, because we are, this is an angle, this is an angle, and we're subtracting them from each other. So this is an angle here, becomes 2 pi f. So we have 2 pi f t times this t. 2 pi f is omega, then times this t minus this guy, which is phi, is now 2 pi x over lambda. This is equation 3, so that this will become equation 4. Now from here we can say, therefore, that a sine, y is equal to a sine into bracket 2 pi f, Okay, also recall that before this, we should also recall one of the equations we talked about in the introduction to it. Recall that what? That f is equal to what? f is equal to, um, you remember that v is equal to f lambda? Okay, so that f is equal to what? v over lambda. All right, so because of that, from there, y can be equal to a sine into bracket 2 pi f, which is now v over lambda, times t minus 2 pi x over lambda. This is equation 5. All right. So we can move here so that we have y will be equal to a sine 2 pi v t over lambda minus 2 pi x over lambda. All right, so this is the equation 5. Then you notice that 2 pi over lambda is common. 2 pi over lambda is common. So that y will be equal to a sine into bram. We'll bring this guy out. a sine of 2 pi over lambda, close brackets, all we are left with is v t minus x. All right. Is equation six, and you can just begin to maneuver, maneuver, maneuver. Um, for example, maneuver, and for example, um, at a point here, if we consider this to be period from four, from four, you know that four says a sine of two pi f t minus 2 pi x over lambda. So if we consider a, um, t to be period, if t is period, then t, then t must be equal to 1 over f, right? So y will be equal to substituting t for 1 over f. I want by f t, we have this, 2 pi f will cancel f, f times 1 over f minus 2 pi x over lambda. Now y will now be equal to a, sine of 2 pi f takes care of f minus 2 pi x over lambda. 
So what does this tell us? It means that we can also have something like this. A sine of 2 pi is common into bracket 1 minus what? X over lambda. And you know you can just play um, around with the equation. Okay, so, but usually in your exam, you are most likely to be asked questions from equation 4 and equation 6. So make sure you master how to derive um, those equations step those equations step by step. Um, I hope you did get, gain value from this video. Do want to subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. I told you let us take this channel to one million subscribers. God help God bless you as you share this video. Amen.